Welcome back, everyone, to Disco Elysium. You're here with me on the people that is known as Drax Craven. Whenever it is finally here! Mr. Dubois, I hear the meeting with Titus was a glowing success. That's such a relief. Titus can be a handle sometimes. Now, what can Everard Claire do for you today? It's done. I mailed the signature as you asked me to mail. The Golden Boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course, I already knew this. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a future and proven to be the true man of the left. I can finally trust you now. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. If you can talk about anything, the strike, the murder, your lost gun, nothing is off the table. Well done, sire. By guile and deceit, you have won. Um, did you order the hanged man killed? Order it? You know my men didn't kill him. They told you it was a happy accident. You know how it is. No one takes the initiative. If I wanted him dead, I would have had to do it myself, and I'm far too fat for that. What do you gain from him being dead? Why, a war, of course. And what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Mr. Katsuragi. I have victory to gain. We're going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realize there is one. Um, have you heard what two giant serrace hornets can do to an entire colony of bees? I have. It's a great story, Harry. Did you also know that the bee colony kills the giant hornet? They swarm and blanket it entirely until it suffers from a massive heat stroke and dies. He crosses his hands, contently thinking of the interior temperature of the wasp rising. They cook it alive in its exoskeleton. Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1. And that's just Martinez. With all the unions in Revachol and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, 15 men, 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them. The fascists hate them. Even the moralists think they're in bad taste. Well, how's this connected to the strike? Harry, there is no strike. Only war. Class war, or in business terms, a dawn raid. Or wait, is that button you still pay them or something? Uh, because we don't we don't do that. We're not going to give nothing. We're going to take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're going to take all of this for the people and fuck wild pines. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. So that's why you haven't let Joyce in. Yes, it's also why I let that midget Gomon go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her assholes. She doesn't have a chance. Why are you telling me your plans? Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. He looks at the swordfish clock. It's already happening. Um... How are you going to fund your new independent harbor? Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How am I going to replace all the contacts we'll, we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? The clients will ditch us? Harry, we've thought of everything. We've been running back-channel negotiations with all the major clients. I think the company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martinez and to the new competitive contracts we have to offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will shipping those containers double time. You'd be surprised how fast things go without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold, exotic new revenue streams. Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking? Don't be stupid, Mr. Kitsuragi. There are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Samaran Isola. You don't need to be colonialist about it. All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry, industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Grannies, little babies, people with disabilities. Wow, a neurochemical psychoactive labor uprising. Hostile takeover. That's just the tip of the iceberg, though, isn't it? The company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad, has bad optics, may be illegal in some countries. Some countries. The Debordeaux Union, however, we're all about large volume column. We're going to transport the living daylights out of those materials, Harry. He slams his fist on the table once more. So your sick kid can get his benefit and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off his risperazol. And the kids on the street can get speed and beer hauled on. I'm an old-fashioned guy, Mr. Kitsuragi. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. But if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the union take a fantastic share. 
and I'd keep that stuff away from Martinez. Is Ruby helping you secure this fantastic share? Harry, if I was if I was supplying raw materials to drug manufacturers, I would need an army of rubies. Understood. Hmm, makes sense to regulate the drug trade like this. Keeps it out of more dangerous hands. Oh, Harry, you've misunderstood. I have no drugs in my hands. It's all so far removed from me like some half-remembered dream. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would be only be a small part of the harbor's turnover. Just like the harbor is but a small part of Marnay's. So, is there a trade or isn't there? Let's look at the big picture. Martinez as a whole. There are little girls out there with dreams of making music. Young mothers who want to start businesses. Models who want to walk catwalks and steel welders who want to weld steel. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place to kingdom come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth and everyone's going to pull their weight. Um... I'm very, that's very ambitious. I do sound, it, I do like the sound of what you plan for the working man. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. You have no idea how much it means to me. Uh, because in many ways, you are that working man. You've already done so much. So do you know who killed the hanged man? No idea. It could have been his own mother for all I know. If you ever find the guy, give him a big fat kiss from Evart Claire. Couldn't have done it without him. He really doesn't know. So how do you know it's a guy? I don't. I told you. It could have been his own mother. I'm Pretty sure it wasn't anyone from the Union. Maybe it was the mob, or maybe he killed himself because he was a closeted socialist. Truth is, I simply don't know. He really doesn't, sire. Um, can I get my gun now? Harry, I've got to be honest with you. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. Where is it? An old woman has it, and let me tell you, Harry, word on the street is she's a character, so you should watch out. This, be, this must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy, the one he described as terrifying. So the gun's still with the woman who bought it from Roy. Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling a gun like that? Wild. Anyway, the neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me in the Debordios Union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Waving the gun around doesn't sound good. None of this does. She was waving it around at people? As I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details. Sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. Sounds like a very disturbed and desperate individual. Who is this old woman? Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're going to have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, she calls herself the pigs. There it is again. The pigs, like Roy said. Not good at all. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. A smile flickers in the corner of his mouth. Can you set up a meeting? I already have. Tonight, starting 2200 near the old fish market on the coast, the one on the boardwalk. A little past the fishing village, but be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for, some, for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, back to the fun stuff. She'll be there from 2200 to 0200. More fun stuff. Seems like we already have fun stuff to do. Signatures I got. I know you plan to force them out with the construction noise. Harry, by now you should know I would never do anything tricky like that. However, if the construction noise and limited street access makes some people consider moving, let's just say there'll be freshly renovated buildings near the roundabout where those people can finally enjoy a significant uptick in the quality of life. I'm talking real affordable workers' places. He proudly spreads his hands to demonstrate the size of the palaces. They're very large, so the village is doomed. You were there. You saw the place. A wasteland. There's nothing left. But mark my words, we are going to reset it. Reset. I have big plans for Martinez, and they do not include humans living in those pig sheds on the coast. That land will be used for municipal buildings and commerce. Harry, imagine a youth center supermarket church complex employing hundreds, thousands of people. The coast will be lit up with enterprise and life. All those ruins out there turned into low-income housing. Harry, enough is enough. We're taking this district back. The war was 50 years ago, for God's sake. It's time to move on. Um, do you really expect me to believe that? Yes, I do. I got the center. I got room for rental retail complex. And in four years, I'll get the church, too. The wheels are already turning, Harry. The wheels of progress. This post-war limbo, I won't stand for it. There are kids practically playing with their own feces out there. It cannot go on. There is true indignation in his voice when he speaks about the state of things. And even a touch of pain. The pain is true. He's seen the kids do worse than that. 
And then there will be a giant statue of him towering above it all. Wait. Will you erect a statue of yourself? I'm not a symbolist, Harry. I'm a realist. My statue will be Martinez rebuilt. Five-story building complexes. Kids off speed and landowners and Ozon hating me. That will be my statue. And yours. I mean, we're doing this together. Uh, I knew you were up to something. Damn right I'm up to something, Harry! I'm gonna make the working man as rich as Joyce Messier. That's my job. Like yours is to keep the peace. A true flash of anger in him as he thinks of her. How many of you guys are there? 2,372, plus yours truly, of course. Can I ask you about specific union members? We're past specific union members now. This is the big time. We're talking about the future of Revishal here, Harry. You can bother Leonard with that. He loves to run his mouth at such matters, but I'm in a big time mood, Harry. All right, that'll do. Great, Harry, great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We've united the RCM and the Debideers Union. This... He points to you and then himself has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. Um, it turns out the Strikers were being served an alcoholic brew. I stopped it. I don't know what that means, Harry, but I love it. I love your initiative. Knowing you're out there keeping things running lets me focus on big picture stuff. Don't even tell me what was going on. Alcoholic brew? Stronger? Stopped it? Strike? Ah, I'm just gonna let you surprise me, Harry. All right, Everard. Later, man. We have five skill points available. Baby Jesus. I kind of want to put a punch. No, not yet. Not yet will I put a bunch of points in uh, conceptualization. I do believe Wasteland of Reality will give me a hand with that. Oh, I also could slot in Advanced Race Theory to give me a plus one, uh, and then unslot it and slot in something else, so that, you know, I don't have those terrible racist ideas flopping around in my head. Although, it does raise your conceptualization by two when it metastasizes, but I'm just af so afraid of just being like, nah, man, I'm an advanced race realist. I know the truth. Ugh. It just, it makes me very upset. Very upsetty. Upsetty spaghetti. They have surprises. But yeah, even so, that would only bring my conceptualization up to six, which only gives me about a 50-50 shot of succeeding on the roll to convince Cindy to give me her brush. And I mean, I might need to raise other points in other ways. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. But if I recall correctly, completing Wasteland of Reality might give me a hand. But I'm not exactly sure. And there, of course, there's more equipment out there. There may yet be something else that increases my conceptualization. And if I can get 50 real, I can buy those speakers. And then maybe I can give them to the ravers. Oh, and the sneakers come with them. But, to the north. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I've got a lot to do before nightfall, before I deal with the pigs. And I think after I deal with the pigs, I'll um, go find Ruby, hopefully. A dead phone, smash receiver, like someone hung up too hard. You can imagine why. Calls can be terrible sometimes. Congratulations, this is the other functioning phone. Someone must have worked hard to smash the plastic dome. Welcome to the boardwalk. Someone has left an unidentifiable, unidentifiable, unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. Touch it. The cloth, if you can still call it that, makes a soft scrunching noise as you thrust your finger into it. Take a closer look. It's streaked with dried seagull shed and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests there might be a jacket beneath this crust of filth. Please tell me you're not taking that with you. Why not? 
It's a guano encrusted jacket, and you're already carrying enough at, around as it is. Oh, I'm definitely taking the filthy jacket. Yoink! Woo! Wait a minute, can I use the, uh, the multi-tool to open that? I can! It truly is multi-use! Ooh, sweet postcard. A makeshift roof, vagrants have tried to make the boardwalk habitable. That tarp will keep up neither rain nor snow nor wind. Curses. A coin-operated weight machine hasn't been used for over a decade. Ooh, yay! Mega Beano's prescription glasses! Vagrants have recently painted the tarp red. Water drips from it. Nope. Oh, change. Uh, mm, no, I don't want to go over there quite yet. Bars cover these long, dusty windows. Try to see inside. Dripping water falls from high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. There's rust and corrosion on the bars. They're foaming with it. A small layer of white sea salt from the sea. Lieutenant, can you make out what's inside? No, I won't even try. You know. I had a partner once. They called him Eyes because he had to show me things. It's really that bad. This partner of his, Eyes, things didn't end well. It saddens him to say his name. Don't even ask. He wouldn't answer. Maybe some other small talk? Can you still shoot, though? Well enough. Actually, it's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I passed my shooting course to 7 out of 10. Huh. Nice. Another power box. It charges nothing now. It's empty. Nice. Nose of Fed. Hey man, what's going on? And me, Kyle. Notice the windows. Especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. A blonde man stands next to his son, pointing to the weather worn ruins. He sees you approaching and smiles. You, officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez. I'm Trant Heidelstein. You must be Kim Kitsuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. How do you know Kim? Nice to meet you. Um, hold on. Hypertext? Yes, hypertext. Yang Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. Excuse me? He's just making up fancy words. This doesn't mean anything. Wait, what was that about the windows before? Oh, yes. So, Mikhail, they had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago, so they didn't have windows on the south wall. You and Kim know each other? No, I can't say that we've met before, but I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. He rests his hand on the boy's shoulder. The child stays hidden behind the hem of his father's coat, clutching to his worm-themed coloring book. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into worms lately. The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor or someone who's been on too many radio shows. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revishaw West. So what's so fascinating about this empty old building? Aha! But it's not just an empty old building. He raises his hand to his eyes to shield himself from the pattering rain. All four of you turn to admire the mural before you. What a, not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Feld Electrical. And Feld, which now sells ink cartridges, mostly was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics boom. Hold on, what's R&D? Oh shit. Burp, derp, derpity, derp. Uh, look at the building. It looks old and weathered, with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed roof. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on the broken windowsill. Wait, what's an R&D department? Apologies. It's an acronym for research and development. They don't use it anymore. He smiles brightly, laugh lines around his eyes. You're probably more familiar with RTD, Research and Technological Development. Mia culpa, you are not familiar with that one either. This man is a is, this man is a bookhead. I don't think I've ever heard of Feld Electrical. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferrotape manufacturer remains. 
They started out as a Midway electronics outfit in Coniston two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in the business machines, but Feld had an ace up their sleeve, or should I say, they were developing an ace up their sleeve. I'm mixing my metaphors here. Alright, what was it? It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for tape computer. A tape computer? Mm-hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferro tape ribbons, portable enough to be taken in-home solution. Uh, part, pardon me, portable enough to be a take-at-home solution, revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bringing them to the average consumer, which is a feat of engineering even today's giants Ream, ICN, and Zam haven't achieved yet. You assume something like a combat stance facing the wind. Well, what happened? Indeed, what? The revolution, Mikhail says. Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Rivashal backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes, possibly from this very building or one of the adjacent ruins. All of this was built by Feld, even the boardwalk. Wild Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management. Feld built this side of town for R&D. You're saying that Feld Electrical built this boardwalk? Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A pleasure wheel? Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. It's clear he would prefer they were big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes, to lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before Feld arrived. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to b become a global center for innovation and cybernetics, but history had other plans. What happened to the engineers? Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. He smiles again, as if he's somehow personally responsible for this bleak turn of events. This story is a bit too dark for little Mikhail here. Now, if you were to talk about tape computers, he means that the boys got shot by the communists. The boys were bourgeoisie. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, I'm not that hard leftist. Tape computers, right? Tape computers. What do the revolutionaries do with those advanced tape computers? They use them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases, the most notorious example being the Decree de Mars. What's the March Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies, the world governments by the newly created Commune of Rivishal on the 7th of March in the year 02. Hey, March 7th, that's my birthday! It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to Revachol on her political concept album, Bombassier de Solende. You should read it. Every local library in Revachol stocks a copy. I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Um, he looks at his son, who starts giggling, his face behind the book. Or, well, tried to. Someone has been paying too much It has been too interested in worms to be paying any attention. How do those tape computers work? Like radio computers? Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirety, entirely of tape would even look like. But word has it, they were very elegant, exquisite, alien-looking turn-of-the-century hardware. Ten years ago, I did a little freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant on a, an expedition for the Wompty Dumpty Dom Center in Vetafort Orange. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ackerman, who was head curator at the time, this was before the twins, Keith and Guy Juice, joined the team, trying to... Wait, what the hell is the Wompty Dumpty Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Juiced? Okay, Wompty Dumpty Dom? What are you talking about? The Wompty Dumpty Dom Center for Contemporary Arts. The exhibition itself drew on Legerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ackerman, is... You're making this up. Kim, is he making this up? In fact... In fact, I'm not. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're in Vredafort. You're ever in the market for exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. But perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write direct directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations, and project output into a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing made of black film and folding tape structures. Cool. Very, very cool. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to this precious device, but so they did. The Feld playback experiment vanished into the fires of Aunt Seven. Wait, the, why did the revolutionaries destroy it? Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now. All three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remain inside that building. 
Two seagulls circle in the sky. You look up and think, really? Or was there a fourth prototype that remains hidden in the mausoleums below Coal City? Maybe. Um. Thanks, Trant. No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikhail here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation. Pick your brain? If anything, this was rather one-sided. You did all the talking. Ugh, whatever. The Wompty Dum Dum Cent- The Wompty Dumpty Dum Center! Minus one suggestion, 42 minutes. It's Wednesday evening and something heinously exciting is underway. People have gathered beneath the billowing roof of an oddly shaped trophy building, sipping wine and exchanging opinions. 29-year-old winter twins, Guy and Keith Juice, are on the stars of the show with their bomber jackets and white sneakers, head curators of this art exhibition. It's the Wompty Dom de Dommiest event of the year and all the kid cool kids have RSVP'd. Where are you if you're not there? All right, that'll do for this episode of Disco Elysium. I've got some, I've got a jacket I need to launder, and oh, just oh so much to do. So much to do, so much.